I'm going to tell you the truth about the Rolex market, something that no other channels are telling you. Let's get into it. Before we dive in, let's do a quick wrist check. I'm wearing my Explorer 214-270. If you've seen my video on this watch, you know that it's very personal to me. If you want the full story, check it out. You're here because you want to understand the why behind the Rolex market shifts. My viewers are smart enough to look up prices themselves, but you come to this channel for something more. You need an economist's perspective to unpack the underlying factors driving these changes. It's not only about the numbers. It's about the economic forces at play, the principles that shape consumer behavior, market trends, and ultimately the value of our favorite timepieces. So if you're ready to dive deep and explore the why behind the Rolex market shift, you've come to the right place. Let's unravel this mystery together. To understand the Rolex market shift, we need to start with some economic fundamentals. Let's talk about indifference curves and consumer behavior. Now, hold on. Before you click away, I promise it won't get too wonky. I will quickly bring it back to the practicalities of the market, but let's talk about indifference curves. In simple terms, an indifference curve represents a consumer's preferences for different combinations of goods or services that provide equal satisfaction. You can see it in this chart here. It's all about the trade-offs we make in our purchasing decisions. Now here's where it gets interesting. We're seeing a significant shift in consumer behavior when it comes to Rolex watches. They're moving along the indifference curve. Instead of prioritizing these luxury timepieces, Consumers are increasingly substituting them for unique experiences. This could mean opting for a once in a lifetime travel adventure, investing in a new hobby, or pursuing personal growth opportunities. The focus is shifting from material possessions to experiential value. But what does this mean for how we understand market trends and pricing models? How do these changing consumer preferences impact the way we analyze and predict the Rolex market? That's exactly what we'll explore next. So sure, let's talk about the limitations of current models in capturing these consumer preference shifts. Many of you know that I frequently use watch charts data in my videos. They are a fantastic resource for tracking watch prices, but it's important to understand the underlying methodology. Watch charts uses the Las Pierre model, which is a price index formula that measures the change in prices of a fixed basket of goods over time. Now, hold on. I promise again, it won't get too technical. It's simply a valuable tool for monitoring price movements, but it has its limitations. One of the key drawbacks of the Las Pierre model is that it doesn't account for consumer shifts in response to price changes. Exactly the preference shifts we are seeing right now. As prices fluctuate, consumers adapt their buying habits, substituting some goods for others. The Las Pierre model with its fixed basket of goods does not capture this dynamic. This means that while watch charts provides a valuable data on price movements, it may not fully reflect the underlying shifts on consumer behavior and preferences. It's crucial to understand these limitations when interpreting market trends and making predictions. So how did the pandemic shape this market and why are some brands more vulnerable than others? To answer this, we need to look at the circumstances that led to the current Rolex market shift. Let's take a closer look at how the pandemic shaped the watch market. These charts from watch charts tell an intriguing story. You can see in the first chart, only Rolex and the Holy Trinity brands, Patek Philippe, Udema Piguet, Vacheron Constantin, experienced a massive surge in prices during the pandemic shutdowns. This hype was fueled by a combination of factors, including scarcity, speculation, and a shift in consumer spending habits, everybody was locked down. However, the second chart reveals that even after the recent price crash, these brands remain vulnerable to the ongoing consumer shift. While the overall market is stabilized, Rolex and the Holy Trinity are still trading at significantly higher levels compared to other luxury watch brands like Omega, Cartier, and Longines. This suggests that the demand for these hyped brands are largely driven by temporary factors rather than a fundamental change in consumer behavior. As the market continues to adapt and evolve to the post-pandemic reality, Rolex and the Holy Trinity may face additional challenges 
in maintaining their premium positions, the next chart is key. You can see that Rolex in particular was vulnerable to a major drop in demand. There is an increase in available inventory and an even bigger drop in sales turnover. That's very telling. So if the demand for luxury watches is changing, what new status symbols are people turning to? How are consumers redefining what it means to showcase their success and sophistication in this new era? Consumers are increasingly drawn to activities that offer both personal fulfillment and social currency. These experiences are becoming the new markers of success and sophistication. Interestingly, this trend is not limited to younger generations. Consumers across all age groups are embracing the idea of experiential luxury, recognizing that memories and personal growth often hold more value than material possessions. How are economic factors influencing the shift in consumer behavior? And what does it mean for the future of the luxury watch market? Let's take a closer look. Despite reports of declining inflation, consumers are still feeling the squeeze. This chart from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reveals a key factor contributing to the ongoing pressure, housing prices. As you can see, the overall consumer price index has been trending downward. The drop in housing prices has been much slower in comparison. This means that even as other costs drop or stabilize, the significant expense of housing continues to burden consumers, limiting their disposable income and curtailing their spending decisions. Moreover, high interest rates further compound this issue. As borrowing costs remain elevated, consumers face increased monthly payments on mortgages, car loans, and credit card balances. These economic pressures have a direct impact on the luxury watch market. As consumers grapple with the ongoing squeeze on their finances, the demand for non-essential high-ticket items is likely to remain subdued. This shift in priorities may further accelerate the move away from traditional status symbols like Rolex watches and toward more experiential and financial prudent alternatives. In fact, we're seeing this across the whole luxury goods market. But as we look to the future, another critical factor comes into play, the supply of Rolex watches. Looking ahead, a significant development is on the horizon for Rolex. The brand is set to open a temporary factory in 2025, followed by a more permanent facility in 2026. This expansion and production capacity has the potential, likely will, to reshape the Rolex market in the coming years. As Rolex increases its output, the scarcity that has long driven the brand's premium pricing will likely begin to ease. With more watches available in the market, the supply-demand dynamics will likely shift, leading to a stabilization or even a decline in prices for even more models than now. However, it's essential to consider that Rolex's brand value and prestige extend beyond simple supply and demand. The company's reputation for quality, heritage, and exclusivity has been carefully cultivated over decades. Nonetheless, the future supply dynamics introduce a new variable into the equation. As more Rolex watches become available, consumers will have greater choice and negotiating power. This could lead to a more balanced, healthier market where prices more accurately reflect the intrinsic value of the timepieces rather than the artificial scarcity that has fueled speculation and flipping in recent years. But what does all this mean for the future of Rolex and the Swiss luxury watch industry as a whole? How will the changing consumer preferences, economic pressures, and evolving supply dynamics shape the landscape of luxury timepieces in the years to come, let's take a step back and consider the bigger picture. As consumers continue to prioritize unique experiences over material possessions, the demand for traditional luxury watches may face a sustained decline. The allure of heritage and craftsmanship, while so important to some, may not hold the same sway over a generation that values Instagram-worthy moments and personal growth over tangible assets. You can see in this chart that units shipped have been on a downward decline since the year 2000. Brands that fail to adapt to these changing preferences and find ways to connect with the new generation of luxury consumers may face declining sales and market share. Now, I'd love to hear from you. Have you noticed this shift from material possessions to experiential luxury in your own life or among your friends and family? I'm curious to know how this trend is playing out in your world and what you think the future holds for the luxury watch market. Your insights and perspectives are always welcome in helping us paint a more complete picture of this fascinating industry. In my next market update, I'll do a deep dive on why Rolex experienced so much hype 
and why it's especially vulnerable to the current market. See you in the next video.